So a client in my master class this week told me that when she was in an interview, she got asked these two questions. What do you think would be the reason why we wouldn't hire you? And if you eventually got fired from this job, what do you think you would be fired for? Now, first of all, those just stink. I like, ugh, I mean, companies that need to ask these questions, but it doesn't surprise me that this level of questioning is coming out right now. And that's because hiring managers are feeling the pressure to make sure they hire the perfect person. And so they're creating all these hoops and questions to try to figure out who's the wrong person to hire. So as crazy as those questions sound, I understand why they're asking. What you need to understand in that situation is that they've likely been burned and hired some people that haven't worked out or have been told, don't blow it, you better hire the right person. And they don't know that asking these questions really aren't gonna give them that answer, you know? But you get asked a question in an interview, you better answer it, I'll be honest with you, because failing to answer questions in an interview will cost you the job. So a couple of thoughts when you get asked questions like this. It's really important that you find an answer that isn't too controversial. So this is kind of a new take on the what's your greatest weakness. You don't want to do the whole, well, my strengths create my weaknesses. So, you know, if you were to not choose me, it's probably because I have too much attention to detail, you know, or um, if you were to fire me, it's because I said yes to everything and I got overworked. Like, that's not going to fly. Those scenarios are not going to fly. All right. What you need to do instead is think about the job and the top five things that are needed to do this job well. So hopefully you've done your homework prior to, you know what the job description says, you know what the five most important tasks are that you're going to need to do on this job, right? And then take a moment to honestly rank yourself. You know, they can't all be equal and say, I'm strongest at this, second strongest at this, third strongest at this, fourth strongest at this, fifth strongest at this. So now we've at least got, while you're capable of doing the job and doing it well, if you were to rank yourself, this fifth one is your least strongest, all right? That way you can answer this question pretty fact-based and say, all right, well, if you weren't to hire me, here's the way I look at it. You know, I look at it as these are the five most important things and I hope I've chosen the right ones, but based on to do this job well, I think these are the five most important things on the job description you need me to do and you need me to do well. And I'm never gonna tell you that I am perfect at all of them and exceed your expectations. I'm always looking to improve myself. So if I had to rank myself, I would say I'm best at this Second best this, third best, fourth best, fifth best. It really shows you've thought about this job. So if you're not gonna choose me, it might be because you want me to be the strongest at this. I can do this, but maybe that's the reason you might not choose me. And if I was to get fired, maybe it's because we get in here and realize that you think there's another skill set that's way more important than the five that I just described, and therefore you feel I'm not a fit. That's a very logical answer. That's a logical, objective answer. And it's a way to avoid going down the path of TMI. Because I see so many job seekers too brutally honest, which, you know, granted is probably what they want, but you don't need to do that. You can give a lot more objective answer based on the facts if you do a little homework like I just talked about. And I would tell you folks, be prepared for this. Because these behavioral questions, these open-ended questions where they want you to tell a story or give more than a one-word answer, are designed to evaluate your personality, your aptitude and experience. Because they're trying to understand, you know, will you actually fit in this job? So you should be ready to answer crazy questions like this. And I just gave you the framework to do it. So one to go, you know. But this is something we do so much in my program because when people come in, they're getting ghosted. And we take you from getting ghosted to getting offers by helping you upgrade your answers to the behavioral questions. You get an interview these days, you're lucky enough to get an interview, you don't wanna blow that interview. And behavioral questions are where people blow it. So make sure you're out there getting the right framework and structure for answering the 18 most common behavioral questions because everyone's asking them. I literally have recruiters download my questions from my program and ask them in interviews. So I know these are the questions and every day I have members going, oh my gosh, JT, I nailed the interview. My behavioral interview answers were awesome with the framework. I'm moving forward when they couldn't even get past the interview before. It matters, it, it matters. Um, and hopefully this made some sense to you and you can really start taking the game up, folks, because you gotta brand yourself in these job interviews, but you gotta brand correctly. No TMI, right? You gotta get it just right. 
You gotta get it just right. I hope that helped. Good luck. Go get them.